copyright regulations in another country on the same internet that have quite different ones. To me, it seems like before you really get a, a, a good solution to all these things, the policies are going to have to be harmonized more globally, too. So we've talked about this. The fundamental problem for Hollywood is that, maybe I haven't explicitly stated this, this is really important. It's the marriage of a general purpose network, the internet, with a general purpose terminal. I mean, maybe this it, this is one of the keys to the answer to your question. That you know, what's the what's the problem for Hollywood is that the technologies that have been produced in the last couple of decades are uncontrollable, virtually uncontrollable, <coughs> virtually uncontrollable, and so their approach is to say we got to regulate that they're going to be controlled, and that probably is going to be a really difficult thing to to to, to get the the telecom industry and the lobbyists and the regulators behind them to to just sit down and say okay. So, but that's that's a really it's a really fundamental challenge. And so, you know, can you imagine that, that computers in the future are going to not no longer be general purpose? Sadly, I can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can too. Specialized devices. I can too. But but I wonder at what level. I mean. The, one of the proposals that I suggest is that if there are regulations, maybe it should, if you imagine you've got tools, and then those tools have functions, and then those functions have applications, it's just some, you know, layering. You know, so you use a fork, not for soup, you know, you use a spoon, not for um, slicing things. And so the, you know, the internet and personal computers, tools, do you really want to regulate them away from being general purpose, or can you regulate their functionality? Well, if, if the government said today that all encoding programs or transmission programs had to have some type of uh, copy protection, that might work for the domain of applications of those particular programs, but the historical programs, MP3, and transmission capabilities that are out there, that unless those doors get closed too, will be ineffective in regulating. So to me, I, I think the real solution is that Technologists that understand all these types of things will come up with a solution that Hollywood will probably never come up with themselves, but uh, will will begin to appreciate at the point in time that that solution provides the end users greater functionality that they can actually prefer using that over MP3s, for example. So, so something about it provides them greater functionality, but along with it is embedded the types of controls at a level that can be regulated, and I wonder whether or not the general purpose computer can be regulated out to be not general, general purpose. Maybe commercial influences could make it not general purpose, but I suspect it would be, I mean, that, the whole beauty of it is that it can do so many different things. But it seems to me there's a, there's a regulation, natural regulatory layer at the functional level, where if you restrict the functionality, so that if you have the capability to transmit or to encode, that those capabilities in software, if you're gonna if you're gonna sell some product that has those capabilities, that then you have to have these protections on. It seems to me a much more natural way of going about it. What are the more natural than what? Than trying to say, okay, the, the computer itself has to um, the fellow that uh, proposed the congressman that proposed the computers all computers should be inhibited from being able to make comments. Oh. I mean that. Oh, I so, so I, I, I would, I just can't believe that that's going to fly and really make sense. But I can believe that it might make sense to regulate software and say that, that if the software is going to have X, Y, Z capability, it also has to have A, B, C capability. I think it's still a problem for Hollywood that there's going to be you know, grandfathered software, the, the software that's already out there that enables the copying. But I can imagine that if if the industries are smart and identify those advances in technology that are going to happen and going to be valuable, and then they impose on them sufficient restrictions, that it's, it's not going to keep everybody out. But if it can keep people going through the turnstiles and put, plug it in their BART card or whatever, you know, their metro, um, that's, that's going to be the type of real solution that will enable them to work together. In other words, for example, Microsoft has talked about extensions to XP that uh, tracks content internally and externally. Mm -hmm. uh, this, what I'm, I'm hearing you, you say is pretty much they're uh, uh, 
they're uh, talking points right there more than anything. And Highwood has been very um, cool uh, towards um, using XP as a content management system uh, uh, and uh, uh, trusting in digital rights management. Uh, there's been some talk of putting movies on blank parts of disk drives when they are shipped and things like that. And having the digital rights management mediate that up. Of course, the first hacker that comes along and finds a, a way of uh, unlocking that with the same copy protection um, um, anti-missile missile approach that we heard earlier, um, then obviously that breaks down, and so we've got to go get another uh, missile, anti-missile um, um, uh, arms race uh, of sorts, sorts that, that goes in there. And if that's a legislated thing, then we have cops and robbers uh, situation tying up our country economically uh, with the pursuit of, uh, of this kind of Red Queen's uh, race after a while. So um, that does have some chilling effects on both uh, the uh, content side and on the software side, because the last thing you want is to imagine that um, your computer is working against you uh, in some way that maybe is appropriate or maybe isn't so appropriate. Maybe you can't even quite fathom what it is doing. I know half of the time uh, some of the Microsoft products, I don't even know what it's doing for minutes at a time uh, uh, and what it's reporting back to the, to the money yeah. uh, <coughs> from time to time. It's very um, difficult to deal with a closed box. They, they must never take lights off of hubs and switches and they must never take <laughs> away the, uh, the code that says, here's where I'm masquerading your IP number two from, <laughs> from your router so that you can always know what the thing the damn thing is doing before, <laughs> before you lose everything. Well, I think Hollywood historically has had issues of reproduction right. in old technologies, but not everyone's had a home studio. And in the future, Hollywood has this issue of the software capabilities of the individual, but not everybody's a software programmer. But what's particularly interesting to me about Microsoft and their business model is that their business model is predecessed on controlling software. And that's essentially identical to what Hollywood and the broadband area are, are, are having to deal with. But it becomes a little bit different if it's controlling <laughs> software tools. But to the extent that the broadband internet can be used as a circumvention for encoded content, it's also a circumvention for uh, software tools for the ability to gain back doors and whatnot. But then when it, when, once it becomes, once the problem truly is relegated to um, the missile and missile thing, I think that they've solved the problem. Because that's saying that, okay, we know people are going to jump the turnstiles, but it's not going to be everybody. As long as it's not everybody, we're okay. And I think that at that point in time, the problem's solved. So the range of approaches to copyright policy I've already mentioned is no copying permitted, bad copying permitted, a little copying permitted. It would be interesting to have a dialogue with somebody about, you know, why on this particular law did you say you couldn't copy? And over here you can say copy as much as you want. And it was obviously for the pragmatic aspects of the time or, or for the particular perversi perversities of the situation at hand. But one can imagine that you'd, you'd like to think that maybe there would be a consistent approach, you know, if, if you're basing things on some sort of a constitutional argument, you know, that you know, either you should be able to copy or you shouldn't. Or if you can copy a little bit, you know, it's somehow defined. But as, as I analyze this, and if you're interested in copies of the paper, email me, burkhardt at alumni.caltech.edu, and uh, I can give you a copy of the paper, which has 27 or so pages of endnotes, including you know, just so many different proposals and sort of categorized in these four different, different areas. And it just really isn't a real consistent theme to it. But I think that in and of itself is quite interesting. And here I've just talked about the layers applications on top of functions on top of tools, which to me seems to be a logical sort of control the software, but that's just my own uh, thought process. I'm, I'm not sure how sophisticated uh, things could get, but there is a, there, uh, in an interchange with someone at, uh, oh, what's the group, uh, Freedom Forum? EFF. E Electronic Frontier. Electronic Frontier. Foundation. 
uh, I became aware of something that I actually had. This is a somewhat new area to all of us, and, and me as well included. Uh, there was a Supreme Court decision that by virtue of software being an expression of speech, software exports that otherwise might have been controlled by export of arms control were permitted. And to me that is an indication of the immaturity of the appreciation of the technology because it just does not seem to be that, you know, I, I could maybe argue that my designs for a missile, you know, and the blueprints, you know, were free speech and so why shouldn't I be sending them to some uh, foreign <laughs> country that's, you know, not comfortable with, you know, our policies or something. It seems to me that the, that, that particular uh, interpretation, again, I've got the, I don't remember the name of the John Doe versus, you know, the U.S. government on it, but it's a very interesting thing to read that there was actually a case where the U.S. Supreme Court said, okay, you know, this is software is free speech, so it should be exportable. So clearly the, the opportunity for any new technology for any industry would be to advance what's the current state of the art, you know, and the natural protection would be, progression would be from larger to smaller media, from physical things you've got to carry around to electronically access things that you can get wirelessly or just conveniently wherever you may be. And I think we're very early in that progression. There's very little truly of that that's very functional today for us. Uh, greater choice, which goes with the copyright length and the ability of multiple uh, programmers to be able to get into the system. And particularly, and this is important with respect to how this you know, missile, anti-missile strategy or how the, how the uh, competition to uh, really control, I mean there's opportunity for new business models and that's going to be key as well because when there's greater functionality in the delivery mechanism itself, that I think inherently has to be knowledgeably exploited for it to be effective. And so there's room for a lot of creativity there. The co-conundrum I've already mentioned is that, and this just reiterates that underlying Hollywood's ability to exploit broadband is, is whether or not there is a broadband, to what extent it's broadband, to what extent it's sustainable. And I guess my conclusions are expect the unexpected for a while still. Um, I think that if it's a gamble that uh, telecom's going to turn around just because we've undergone a bust, it's still just a gamble. And that needs to look, be looked at fairly carefully rather than just having investments in what seems to be the path of least resistance. It may not be the path of least resistance. It might be the path of least re resistance might be right over the cliff. <laughs> and as always, it's better to invent the future than predict it if you, if you can manage to do that. And, uh, but nevertheless, I'd like to make a few predictions. 